Hi guys, happy holidays to you. And uh, I have a special story I think you might get a kick out of. If, you know, you're taking some time off and you want to hear something interesting. Uh, years ago, uh, my father had a store which began with his father uh, called Bettinger's Luggage on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Very historic section, uh, Ratner's and Katz's, uh, famous stores, Fine and Klein, Russ and Daughters, and Bettinger's Luggage was indeed one of them, which was there from 1914 until the mid-1990s, so that's about 80 years in business. And the unique thing about the store is that when my dad uh, took over the shop after he was in the service in the mid to late 1940s, he started to uh, come up with different plans and ideas of how he could make it the best uh, luggage shop uh, in New York and in the world, I guess, because there's many stories about it. Now, the thing is, the store was tiny. Uh, half the sales were made in the sidewalk in the street because you couldn't fit everybody in the store. And he set it up in such a way that nothing looked like it was perfect. I mean, bags were hanging from everywhere. When you walked in, you felt, oh, I got to get a good discount at this place. But he did that, you know, because he knew what he was doing. But the fun part of it is, is that dignitaries, ambassadors, uh, celebrities, Supreme Court justices, everyone bought their luggage at my dad's tiny little shop because of one reason, he had an ability to be able to find the top brands, the most famous brands, and sell it for like a fraction or a quarter of the cost. And people couldn't understand how. But he understood how. What he did was he would contact all the manufacturers. And he was friendly with most of them because remember when his father began, uh, the men who were Samsonite and American Tourister were just getting started and they all knew my dad's dad who helped sell their merchandise. So there was a good friendship, you know, in the in the Bettinger family. And what my dad was doing, he would say, any sets of irregulars, slight irregulars, I'll take it. And truckloads of goods that could not be put into Saks or Macy's with the top brands because of tiny, tiny little mark on it or something. Now, when you take the luggage and you go to the airport, within five minutes, it's in regular. So everybody bought their luggage there for half the price. Jerry Lewis, Billy Eckstein, Lou Reed, people coming and going in this tiny little shop. And the most amazing thing is that uh, he kept it the way it always was. It was a very humble, uh, fun, um, hard-working, interesting place to be. And the unique thing about my dad and my mom is that, uh, and my dad's sisters and everybody who worked there is that uh, everybody had a job. If you came to my father and you said, you know, Lou, I need a job, you know, and you were 16, 17 years old, didn't matter where you came from, what color your skin was, had no bearing at all on him. If you said you needed a job, he gave you a job. And he worked you hard. But then after a big day of work, he'd take everyone out to dinner and make sure they had a good dinner. And we talk about how everything went during the day. In fact, there's a picture here of um, my dad on the left. And I'm there about 16 years old. My mom smiling at the camera. And the whole crew of the store at that time having dinner in uh, Chinatown. And uh, what was fascinating really about Bettinger's is that it remained in business from 1914 till the mid-90s, which is very hard to do uh, in retail. And uh, it was quite a legacy. In fact, I, I made, I had an artist of mine who, was, who would work on um, storyboards for videos I'd produce. I had him make this uh, wonderful sketch of Bettinger's luggage, and I presented it to my, to my parents at a special uh, anniversary celebration, and they always kept it in their house. It was quite amazing. Uh, his, my father's father came to this country uh, from the shtetls of uh, Poland, the pogroms. He came here with nothing, you know, uh, Ellis Island, then started with a push cart and sold whatever he could find, Sussman Bettinger, and then uh, uh, eventually moved into a basement. Now, if you moved into a basement of the store, you were up and coming, and then eventually rose to the storefront and Bettinger's uh, was, a, you know, quite an interesting shop. A lot of the shops on Lower East Side were very famous. Ratner's and Katz's, Yona Schimmel, Russ and Daughters, Fine and Klein, and on and on. And Bettinger's was part of it. 
And uh, I just wanted to let you know about that interesting little uh, part of history. Uh, another thing is that my dad, he wasn't always satisfied with just selling luggage. He liked deals, anything that he could get at the right price. So the back of the store would be filled up with tuna, cans of tuna, boxes of Barilla pasta, whatever happened to be that week's special. So when somebody would buy a suitcase, you know, he'd open the Samsonite or the American Tourist or whatever it is. You like pasta? And he'd, give me 12 boxes of Barilla. Right. And the guy would go home, open the suitcases. Wife would say, oh, shopping at Bettinger's again. So <laughs> it was quite a unique history. And there you have the story of uh, Bettinger's luggage. And I hope you'll join us today for the Mom and Pop Shop on the radio. Tune in radio at it's right here in Miramar, 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific. Enjoy your holidays. We'll see you soon.